Hello, welcome to Country Stitchers, I'm Deb. Hopefully by the next video, you'll be able to see Liz and I back together. That's what we're hoping, fingers crossed. Um, hope you all had a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Uh, it was beautiful here and we did some cooking out on the grill and the kids enjoyed the pool. It's still too cold for me, but um, it's getting a lot of use and that's awesome. We did the rest of the planting. I mean, the garden looks great. It's, it's doing really well. And we've gotten just enough rain and um, it looks wonderful. We put in tons of seeds a while ago and then we do start with some starter plants, usually like our lettuces and kale. Um, we did do starter tomatoes this year instead of the seeds. And um, all of our berries look great, uh, everything Everything's good to go. The only thing I didn't have room for was my squash. And what else? We'll probably just plant that over with the pumpkins because they take up so much room. They go crazy. So um, anyway, everything's doing well. Um, I did get some stitching in. Feels like it's been a long time since I've done a video. Uh, but we are very busy, even with this quarantine thing. McKenna graduated, so she's finished school. Yay! Um, that's exciting. And thank you so much for all her, all the well wishes for those of you that follow me on Instagram and just, you know, wished her well and, and all the sweet things um, that you said to her. She loves reading all the comments and uh, she is knee deep in um, full-time job at the hospital now. She's been working at the hospital, but that was part-time during school. So now, as she says, she's adulting. So uh, it's all, that's all going well. Logan wrapped up school. That's finished. But it's weird though because you know at the end of school I always look forward to the last day of school. Love the last day of school because then the very next day it feels like summer officially starts. But with this year there's no real there wasn't like an ending a definite ending to anything to any of the sports to you know there were no banquets. Um, there was no dance recitals. McKenna still teaches dance and there was no recital. Um, there was just no finality to anything this year. It's so strange. So it feels like we've been knee deep in summer now for a couple of weeks because of the nice weather and the pool is finished. And, um, but it's, I'm not complaining. It's a lot of fun. I love, love summertime. And I love having people home as much as we possibly can be at home. All right, well, let's get into it. I forgot to write down my questions there on my phone and that's what's videoing. So I'm sorry, I'll have to answer some questions next time. But I got a lot of comments lately about if I would do a whip parade and show everything that all of my in progress stitching. But I can't really call it that because some of these things I haven't touched forever and so I don't consider that in progress. But I went around the house and collected everything. <laughs> so I'll show you. Everything that I have put a stitch into, but yet is not finished. And if you want to consider that a whip, then have at it. Um, so we'll get into that. On Liz's last video, I hope you got to see that. Um, she forgot to mention the, the, um, the name of the recipient for the Heart and Hand um, monthly charts. It's so hard. I mean, even when we're together, we still forget things. And when you're, when you don't have that other person to kind of go off of, um, it's even worse. <laughs> we'll finish our videos and be like, oh my goodness, I forgot this. I forgot that. Oh, well. Um, so I wanted to get that out of the way real quick. Um, that the, the, uh, recipient will be Claire McNamara. So Claire, if you can, uh, get a hold of me, my address will be, well, my email address will be in the drop down section and then uh, just email me and I will get this chart out to you. Congratulations. You have all of the months there to do and the border. So that'll be fun. And then stay tuned. We have some more giveaways for a little bit later in the video. All right. Um, let's see. Maybe I should just get right into. Oh, I just wanted to say, though since 4th of July is coming up and we just had Memorial Day, a lot of patriotic charts are coming out. A lot of designers have, you know, their, their summer patriotic stitching. There's two that I absolutely fell in love with that I wanted to share with you. Um, Paulette Stewart, the designer for Plum Street Samplers, you can find her on YouTube. She has a video and her um, chart called 
a new constellation. It's about Betsy Ross. Oh my gosh, I love it. That's awesome. So I do want to get that one. That, that's really, really pretty. And you can see it all. And I love how she explains, you know, some of the history and everything um, that goes along with that chart. If you pull her up on YouTube, you can actually watch it and see um, her video about it. And then check out Misty Purcell, Luminous Fiber Arts. She is a sweetheart and, now she, and she's been designing now for a little while. And um, I don't know how many videos ago it was, but I got to catch up with her a little bit and I saw one of her latest designs and it's a, um, it's like a, a, it's a patriotic, but, but has Quaker in it too. And it's just, it is so well done, Misty. Congrats. You did a fantastic job. I think it's adorable. It has a squirrel on it. It has, it's like a flag within flight. There's multiple flags if you really look at it. Um, the colors are beautiful. I just love how she incorporated the um, Quaker motifs in there. So those are two of my absolute favorites that I've seen come out so far with the different designers and the patriotic stitching. So if you haven't seen either one of those, check them out. They're awesome. All right, let's just jump in. How about that? Oh, I want to show you something real quick. Um, right there, this cabinet. If you remember a while ago, I think <laughs> I told you that I was going to use that. I got it at a yard sale to store my DMC thread in. Uh, of course, I've changed my mind. I'm still not sure what the heck to do with that DMC stuff, but I'll figure it out. It's okay. I have my Weeks Classic Colorworks. Um, what else is over there? Gentle Art. I have all of those things I've, I've shown you hanging up on rods on my wall, and they hang from... Um, uh, like curtain rod clips so it's easy to get on and off it's easy to keep them in alphabetical order and that's great that's working for me I love that system I thought I was going to do the file system but I like to see my threads um, I don't want them put away in a file thing and no I don't worry about them getting dusty or dirty I, I want to see them because when I you know how I change colors all the time and I choose threads for what I want to stitch I can just go to my wall and just look and just start picking so but for all of my other threads you know how you have oh my gosh tons of uh like you have some wool you have your all your good lord what's in here we have <laughs> um hmm, silks and all of your um metallic threads you know you have all of those some of the like the whisper things um Anything that is not like a normal overdyed or a DMC goes in this container. And so you can remove the, the little thingies here and then you have even more, you know, down there. But I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna organize all of this and put them in these drawers so that this will then be another thread cabinet. And my son was so sweet to um, go ahead and put these little label things on here for me on each drawer. So all I have to do is slide in a little tab that I have written on there what will be in each drawer. And I think that'll work out really well. That'll give me more room for, um, because this is pretty full right now. And you know, you collect threads over time and you, I can't really fit much more at all into this container. So I wanted to share that with you. That's what I'll be doing with those threads. That'll be fun. Um, there's six, nine, 21 drawers there. So that should last a while, hopefully. All right. So I have been, I'll show you what I've been working on, like actually working on since I've seen you last. And then we'll just, we'll just dive right into um, all of my, all of my whips. All right. Uh, let's see. I was working on the Fat Quarter Shop uh, Feels Like Home Sal. It started in the very beginning of May and it runs the whole way through May. There's five different um, sections to it. Each week was released a new section. Um, I am behind, but I'm loving it. I'm having so much fun. I am using their um, fabric, 25 count, I think, if I remember correctly, called Cloud. And um, I'm using some of the call for thread and then I decided to change because there's um, some pinks in the thread uh, pack 
that they have and I'm not really a pink person. I don't, I mean, I like pink, but I don't decorate with it. Pink and purple is not my colors to decorate. So um, I decided to change a few colors and change up a few more things, but I'm working on the house right now. I wanna show you that. Um, I have to finish the roof right there, right here. Um, I am putting in a lot of backstitch because uh, again, you know how much I love backstitch. I love that it makes it pop and just gives all that detail to it. I also stitched my um, overdides in a certain way that I wanted it to kind of have the look of stone, like gray stone. I didn't want my house to be stripy, just like I didn't want my bird to be stripy. Um, and so I am using, I think it's the same color that they called for for the house, but then I decided to change, change up like you know, the windows, they had the turquoise in the windows, no backstitching. Um, I put on a yellow double door there with little handles. Um, and I added this off-white kind of taupey, light taupe color um, in the house. And I really love it. I think it's coming along really nicely. And there's my birdie. Uh, the, the branch for the tree there is a whipped backstitch instead of a cross stitch. So that's fun. It's really coming along nicely. Um, let's see. The trim in the house is called Shaker White, and that's a gentle art. And then I chose some yellows that I want to throw in there instead of the pinks. Um, so here's some of the, and which actually I have one of the yellows in the door of the house. So I'm going to be using this color palette, and I really like that how that yellow plays with them, um, the blues there, the turquoise kind of colors, and the gray. So that's, that's what I have so far on that house, on that pattern. And that's really fun. It's easy to see. We went up to the mountains over the weekend. Um, and we were home yesterday for Memorial Day to hang out at the pool and cook on the grill. But we went to the mountains and um, I was able to work on this in the car, which that's saying something because my husband was driving. And I can't usually stitch very well when he drives. But when we go places like that and we're taking more than one vehicle, I love to ride with Logan, my son Logan, because he's a great driver and I can stitch wonderfully when he drives, but whew, not when Matt drives usually, but I, I did. I got a bunch of that finished and then I, I'm just going to throw that aside. I worked on Isabella Sinclair 1827, a Scottish sampler. I will show you my progress. This is the sampler. Beautiful, love that alphabet. In fact, I haven't stitched one letter yet. I'm working in all of the motif area first, but I'm so excited to get up to the alphabet because they're just stitched so pretty. I love that. Looks like filigree, it's so pretty. All right, so that is the sampler. And this is what I have so far, and it is stitched on 40 count. Oh. Summer Khaki Newcastle. Very nice fabric to work with. This is what I have. I, I did get a lot finished since I saw you last time. Very fun. Nice colors. Nice and summery and springy. Like it a lot. And look at this. Look how beautiful. Look what Liz made me. Look at my little girl. And it's so cute. I wanted her to resemble McKenna. So she went ahead and put brown hair on her and gave her pigtails. And isn't she the cutest thing? And McKenna, when she was little, her dresses that she wore had to, um, the way that McKenna <laughs> picked out her dresses when she was a little girl, when she spun around, they had to flare out or else it didn't pass, you know. She was just one of those girly girls. And so Liz made this for me and gave it to me the other day and I love it and she's so beautiful. And it just reminds me so much of McKenna with that little flared skirt and look, I mean, she has like legs and everything. Look at that, legs, little shoes on. Isn't that the coolest thing? Love it. Love it, love it. All right, worked on that and then I got some work finished on, oh, I was having so much fun stitching this. Um, Heartstring Samplery, uh, the Choose Your Own Motto, 
chart. I'm not going to take it out of the bag, but it's the choose your own motto chart. And then um, Liz and I used our motto. Um, Beth did that for us and it's share the joy of needlework, of course. And so this is what I have so far. This, mine is stitched over one <laughs> on 30 count. That's right, 30 count. Um, love this. This is a lot of fun. I, I only had this tiny bit finished here when I saw you last or when you saw this last. So I got all of this done and all of this. This is like one quarter finished because this is the halfway mark. This pink flower and this orange flower these are the halfway marks, and so there's four corners that look just like this. Um, and then I just have to fill in the rest of the words. But, oh, man, this is a lot of fun. I do have to stitch it in the daytime because this is interesting fabric. Um, I like it a lot, but I have to have great lighting. Um, there's a lot of very, very, very thin threads in there. And I'm using most all of the Call for colors, except, again, I'm not a purple person, so, like... These orange flowers were supposed to be purple, and I'm, I chose this orange instead. Um, but that, that's really, really fun. And there is no back stitching in this one. And nope, I'm not adding it. <laughs> Shocker. All right. Um, then from um, the, the like the stitch along that we're doing, the Learning Stitches Sampler um, with uh, Kim. Oh my gosh, let me make sure I have everything set up here. Uh, anyway, yes, the Learning Stitches Sampler with Kim from Sassy Jack Stitchery. She put out Lesson 5 and Lesson 6. And so Lesson 5 was black work. And, right? Yes, whew, I skipped a page. All right, black work, and then number six was the modified Parisian stitch. So I'll show you what I have so far on that. Thanks for all the um, compliments about my squirrel. That was really sweet of you. That was so much fun to do. Um, but those of you that asked if I'm thinking about or have ever thought about becoming a designer, not that, I mean, I know you should never say never, but certainly not in my... Um, not something I think about right now, that's for sure. Um, but this is what I have so far. And this was five. Lesson five was the black work, and then lesson six. And I intentionally left this area open for something else. So remember, I'm, I'm doing this in a way, kind of just how I had it in my mind, where it's going to just look real different, and kind of like a puzzle, where you just fit things in here and there, and all of my sections will be different. Some will be long, some will be short, some will be, you know, kind of fatter. Uh, it'll just, it'll be very, um, very different, but I'm loving this. This is on 40 count. The red that you see here is just my stitch guide thread so that I know where to keep my stitching. Um, you know, cause this is 40 count, so it's a little bit easy to, it would be easy to get off of count, you know, be a couple threads over on e either side if I didn't have my guide there. And I just take away my guide as I go. So it was all the way up to the beginning, but I just kind of pull it out and move it down along with my stitching. So that's what I have so far. This is so much fun, I love it. All right. I think, yeah, that's everything that I have actually worked on. No, that's not true. <laughs> I have a finish. I forgot about that. I have a huge mess down here. Good Lord. Um, if you remember, I was stitching the Scarlet House, uh, the red chair sampler. This is it. Um, it is, I stitched this for the very first time. I stitched on 46 count and fell in love with it. Oh my gosh. Um, to say thank you again to our friend Sandy. And um, I, I did, I absolutely love stitching on the 46 count. And I know how I'm gonna finish it too. Hopefully I'll have that like completely finished for you next time, because I'm excited about the finish. So this is it. I went ahead and folded it under just because I wanted to see something the size of it. But um, this is it all finished up. It's so cute and little. 
It's stitched with silk, um, only a few colors though. And uh, I just love that blue and that red together. It's, that's just gorgeous. Um, I usually, whenever I stitch an alphabet, I try to always stitch my um, initials in a different color. That's just something I like to do. So that's why the D and the E are a different color. Um, this was a lot of fun and I love how cute the size is. So, finish that and then, this ended up being a finish, but it really was um, a start because <laughs> I wanted to get out the A.B. Sedarian, the Schoolhouse um, series. I wanted to get that out and get that going. And if you remember, I showed you, I think I had the house started and I was maybe, I was saying that I just wasn't in love with the fabric. It is the called for fabric. It's stitched over one. Um, on mushroom Lugana and I like Lugana. I don't know what it is, but for some reason I'm not in love with, um, I don't want to do the whole series in this fabric, but I, you know how you just kind of keep stitching and you think, mm, okay, maybe I will fall in love with it eventually. I, I'm just going to give it another try. And then you put it down you pick it up again and think, okay, I'll like it even more this time. So I just kind of kept going and, um, I'm done trying to fall in love with the fabric. I'm not, I'm not going to do the um, entire series in this fabric. That's all. Um, but what I did was I finished not the entire design from the, from the first part of it, but I did a section of it. And then I decided, okay, well, I don't want to waste what I stitched. And I sent a text to Liz. We were texting back and forth. And I said, I'll just make it an ornament, you know, at, I'll finish it off, make it an ornament. It's cute. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing uncute about it. It's really cool. I just don't want to do the whole series in this fabric. I know I don't want to do that. I fight with it the whole time and I won't love it. So then I started thinking, I need a um, Christmas gift for someone in exchange. And I could seriously make this my exchange. I even have an idea, a really cool idea how to finish it. And that's what I did then. So I'm like way ahead of the game because this is May and I already have my exchange ready to go. So I have to cover up something on the side here that I can't show you. Um, and then, not that it really matters though because you never know who's gonna win in exchange, right? But I'm gonna just cover up the side here and then I will show you my finish. It is really cute. It's stitched over one. I, I stitched the house uh, in a different color than what was called for and I stitched the pedestal um, for the strawberry in a different color than what it was called for. Um, but it, it is very cute. And I went ahead and put the date in right there. So I will get back to actually working on this whole series for myself, but I'm excited that I have that for the exchange. And like I said, I know how I'm going to finish it off too. So that was pretty cool. Other than that, that is all of the stitching that I actually did. Um, since I've seen you. All right, so I went around the house and I collected all my whips. I keep a basket in the living room, a basket in my bedroom. I have ones down here in the craft room. Like I said, the ones that I'm not actively working on, but have started. And I usually keep all of them in project bags and in a basket. Um, my project bags have come from friends. Uh, I've bought a few. Um, sweet kind people that send them to us. Liz has made a few, so they're just a hodgepodge of just fun um, memories of, of um, bags that I've either been given, gifted, or um, have bought. Have not made one yet, so that's fun. I keep them all in my project bags, and I also have a cabinet in my, um, it's like in my end table in my living room, and I'll have some in there too. So I can stitch wherever. I can take it on the road with me and stitch. I always take my stitching with me if I go somewhere and I think I can, can get some done. Um, I can stitch in the living room, outside, in my bedroom. So that's why I kind of have them all over the place. <laughs> um, all right, let's, oh my gosh. I completely forgot to bring down my basket for my bedroom. Well, you're gonna see most of my whips, not all of them. Dang it. All right. 
Thought I was doing good. See, I told you, you just forget everything. Good grief. All right, this is my basket from the living room. Um, and it has little holes in the side, which I can also hang my threads from. This was, um, oh gosh, I shared this to you a long time ago. It was uh, at one of the thrift stores when we went to New York one time. And it was like only a couple bucks. And I saw it right away and thought, yeah, this is perfect. Uh, okay, so... In here, I have some of the ones that I've already showed you that I'm actively working on. And then I have Plum Street Sampler Rack Stack. This is my start. Yep, can't even tell what it is, huh? Mm -mm. Nope. It is not with the called for threads and not on the called for fabric. And I have no clue. I have no idea what fabric that is. It's a mystery. It's kind of cool though. It's like oatmeal-y, you know, it has, oh, that's hard to see. It has like a bunch of little um, specks and flecks in it, which is fun. It's very uneven though. Holy cow, there's some thick threads and some threads you can barely see. So uh, again, it's one of those fabrics that you have to have really good lighting for. Then I have the Shannon Christine Designs Truck Snow Globe. Why I have not finished this yet, I have no idea. I have an idea of how I'm going to finish this one as well, and <sighs> still waiting. There's that. Um, then I have one of my favorite things. Uh, let me show you the picture of it. This was my um, unicorn chart that I was so kindly blessed with. It's dimensions. It was the one that was out of print for a long time, and now you can get it. Um, it's the Scenic Farm. Is that right? Yeah, there you go. That's the picture of it. This is one of those stitches that um, I absolutely love to work on. It's kind of like a good book. You know when you're reading one of those books where... You, you want to keep reading it. You don't want to stop, but yet you do because every page you finish, you're closer to the end and then it's just over. That's how I feel about this piece. Um, I have, I didn't take it out of my cue snap, but you'll get, you'll get the idea. It does. I have stitched over this way some more too, but, um, this is so much fun to stitch. I absolutely am still so in love with this piece. There is a lot of back stitching, which you know, I love. Um, I am stitching this on 40 count and I have changed some of the threads and, and things like that because this is, it, the way that this is charted, there's a lot of blending threads where you're, um, or tweeting, I think is what Liz calls it, where you're, you're at, you're using maybe like three or two or three or four strands, um, of different colors to kind of give a really cool look. Well, I can't do that on 40 count, so I had to change and figure out what was going to look best and get the same kind of effect um, using an over dyed uh, thread. So I am, and I'm also going to put Hank on here somewhere too. Don't worry about that. He'll, he'll be on there. And what else do I have in here? Oh, good grief. This was just a tiny little, see, you go through your whips and you wonder why haven't I done anything with this? This is a Foxwood crossing. It's just one of the um, little sleds. It's morning star Santa cute as can be. And I decided I was going to stitch it on. Liz was doing hers on perforated paper. I was doing mine on um, Ada because that way we wanted to show you the difference. And this is what I have finished so far. And then I stopped. That's silly. And the cool thing is because I chose that dark blue fabric, I don't have to stitch any of the dark blue that's on there. <laughs> Cheater, cheater. All right. One more thing that's in here. Yep, that's it for this one then. This, this is the Quilted Garden, and it is by Blue Ribbon Designs. This is so pretty. This is hanging up in the lobby in um, the Lankford Hotel, where Salty Yarns is. And it's just beautiful. And when I saw it hanging up there, I mean, because, you know, the pictures just don't do it justice, but when I actually saw it hanging up there, I went ahead that year, went whatever year that was, because it was a while ago, kitted it all up, um, 
I'm not using the called for fabric though. I don't think so. I think I am pretty much using the called for thread though. This, I have had this for a very long time. It's so pretty. I am doing a lot more backstitching though uh, than they, they hardly say any backstitching in this, but I'm, I am doing a lot. So that's the chart and this is what I have finished, which is quite a lot. One of those ones you look at and you think, why did I stop? Because it's so pretty. The colors are so pretty. You know, looks like real, real quilt blocks. And again, like I said, I have a lot of backstitching because I really wanted each quilt block to pop on its own. So that's that. Okay, so that is my stitching basket in the living room. All right. I have a royal mess here. Okay. Now, the things that I had down here. Um, because, again, I forgot the one that was in my bedroom. So, there are still a few more things to see. Um, all right, let's start here. I have a couple things that are not even cross stitch, they're um, needle points. And this one is like all but finished. All, the only thing I have to do on this to finish this ornament is um, 10 stitch around in that tan area. This was a, like a painted canvas. And um, this is some of that whisper thread, which because it's been in a bag so long, you have to really fluff it up. So you gotta get out your little bunko brush or your um, brush that people use for their um, dentures. <laughs> just don't tell anybody, just kidding. So the only thing I have to do is stitch around and then finish it off and I have my ornament. Yep. And then what else do I have in here? Oh, this was a tree. Yeah, I'll probably not continue with that one. I'll probably rip that one out. That was a tree. Don't think I'm gonna finish that. But with needlepoint, you get to use all of the fun, fun threads too. A lot of beautiful threads for needlepoint as well. Um, okay. Then you all have seen this one and I haven't done anything else on it because you know I got frustrated that the fabric was cut the wrong way and I, deci and I decided to start it anyway, which was silly because I was that impatient. And um, I just, I haven't gotten any further and it's awesome, it's beautiful. But this, so this is a Stony Creek chart. It was out of one of their magazines. It's their Bell Pool series. I already did the, um, I did the autumn. And the way that my autumn hangs is like this. I didn't finish the bottom quite like that, but it, it hangs like this on my door in my living room and I love it. And that's exactly how I wanted my winter one to hang. Simple like that, just on, on this fabric and um, same way as the autumn one did. Well, now I can't do that obviously because it's stitched the wrong way. And I know a lot of you have given me suggestions and I had thought about, you know, cutting it apart and kind of quilting it together and putting fabric in between each piece and doing it. But I, when you have something stuck in your head of a way that you wanted it to look and I wanted it to look just like my autumn one, I even have the um, metal hanger for the top of it. I, that's why I'm stuck because I just have it in my head and I'm being stubborn about changing. That's all. So that's still a work in progress. Well, not really, because there's no progress. It's a work, but there's no progress. This one, this is so pretty too. This is another one that I found this morning while looking for, you know, everything that I've been working on or haven't been working on for a while. And I'm thinking, gosh, this is so beautiful. I really need to get back into this. It's Floral Alphabet Part Two. And this was 2009. Um, this was in a couple different, it was like a series and it came in a couple different uh, magazines and it was in just cross stitch, not magazines. It was in just cross stitch. June, 2009 is uh, maybe the beginning of it. I'm not sure. But then it was in a few of the um, prints after that. It was, they didn't show everything in 
one issue. But this is really, really pretty. It is all DMC. Um, I'll show you what I have finished so far. It's very, very pretty. Um, I have no idea what the, this is stitched over one. I don't know, maybe 28 or, or something. I'm not sure. I do not know, but I have like half of it finished. Almost. Good bit of it anyway. And the colors are very pretty. Like I said, I'm not really a pink or purple person, but this is just, I don't know. I just think it's beautiful. Yes, there's backstitching. All DMC though. So that's that. Then um, this is, this was a PDF download, I think. And it was like a hundred days, a hundred days stitch. And you're supposed to do one. I can't show you the entire chart because I printed them out and they're all, um, each page is its own, you know, like design. So, or like combination of all of these motifs that you're just supposed to stitch. And it's basically just all, um, it's all like just backstitching and everything. There's, you don't really fill them in, nothing. Um, it's kind of cool, different. So this is what I have finished so far on that. It's just a bunch of, a whole bunch of different motifs. Look at the seahorse, he's so cute. And I am not sure what size, that. I think this is 40 count. Yeah, it's 40 count fabric. Um, I chose my own colors. And like I said, that was um, a PDF download and I haven't picked that up in forever. Then one time we were at um, the retreat at Salty Yarns for the Jamboree, I think it was. And Deborah Merrick, uh, she taught us a class on gold work. And oh my gosh, gold work is gorgeous. So this is the pattern, that flower there the same flower just in two different shades of fabric um and this is why this isn't finished I have no idea this is what I have so far for my gold work um this is really cool because you're using a lot of different this is my gold work basket <laughs> um got all my containers of everything in here because you have different size of like wiry kind of things. Um, it's, it's a very different way of stitching. A lot of fun, but something to get, it's like wire. Um, really, really cool. So I have, I have all of my wire in there and you definitely need two hands when you do this. So you wanna make sure you clip your, your frame, you hold your claim, your frame to something um, but it's very, very pretty. So again, I don't know why I stopped some of this stuff. The last piece, needlework piece that I have started and haven't done anything with is this one. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh. That is so pretty. Um, painted canvas and I have some of the barn and some of the snow. I don't know if you can see, but some of the stitching in the barn finished, and then I started the, um, the snow here. But it's beautiful. So pretty. So, that's not finished. And then in some of my bags down here, hmm. well, let's see. Oh, this one, yes. Good grief. Love this. By the bay. Um, let me see if I can. It's by the bay needle art, and this is the entire pattern. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. Again, why did I stop? Because I was getting down to all the fun, you know, the fun part, like where it's really filled in nicely. But this is what I have so far. I did change the colors in the the vine, the roses, the water, because I wanted my water to have movement. So the the darker and the lighter part of the, these are two colors here, just the, the dark and the light. 
but they are variegated threads um, and that's why it, it kind of gives that illusion of movement for the water. And I'm gonna have to redo my sails here. My, not my sails, but my um, long stitches because it's been so long and it's been in and out of a frame that they're loosening up, but that's not a big deal. I can cut those out and redo those, not a problem. So it's summertime, I should have this out and I should be getting to this and it's so pretty. Mm. Oh, gosh. All right. That comes as 12 charts, I think. 12? I don't know. It's a lot of charts. Um, I, was, I think it started out as like a mystery thing, but by the time I got to it, it was no longer a mystery. <laughs> All right. Next, what do we have here? Hmm. Oh. Oh, I can just show you this. Uh, Cooler Classic Charts. This is the Summer Sampler. Uh, it's by Cooler Design Studios. I love this. I love the autumn and I love the winter one. I have all three of them and I just think they're awesome. Beautiful. This is on 40 count fabric and I know why I stopped. And this is like the second fabric that I started with too. This fabric is so stiff. I mean like Sucker's got some starch. I had it on my scroll frame. Um, took it off. This is what I have stitched so far, which is not much. But I know why. It's because the fabric, I'm not, I'm not in love with the fabric. So I don't know if I might just start it over for the third time on something that I'm actually loving because oh, it's, I love the pattern, but I, I am not loving this fabric. So I started in the middle with the B scup, and that's what I have so far. So, I don't know. Not feeling that. I think I might have to change that one. Again. All right, and this is my punch needle that is not finished yet. So I'll show you both sides. This is, um, it's like a sampler from, um, yeah, it's called the Homestead Sampler and it's by With I Needle and Thread, which is uh, Brenda Gervais. This is it. It's quite large all the way to all this red here. Um, it's all done with Valdani, which was part of my problem because I ran out of, so you have to draw this on the fabric. Okay. And it's, this one's very detailed. So I did that. I, I did not use a light box. I always hold my fabric up to the window and you use a very fine tip, um, fabric pen. And anyway, the whole thing is, is drawn on. And then I started in the middle and this lighter thread here of Valdani I ran out of and just could not find that color. Every, every time Liz and I went to a specific store or something, I would look for it. Nope, didn't have it. Um, so anyway, this is what I have so far. And when we went to Vegas, I was able to find the color and it's called Sunwashed. And I got like, I got everything she had. I think I got like two or three of them. And I'm hoping I don't even know if this will be enough, but hopefully it will be. Um, so now I have the thread for the center and I can go ahead and get started on that again. Because that, that is a lot of fun. All right. I don't want to lose any of my stuff here, but I have a mess. I need a helper. McKenna's not here today and Liz isn't here. <laughs> oh man. All right, next. Told you, got a lot. This is, uh oh, I don't know if I have the uh, cover page. It's the oh Cornwall Cottage Sampler, and I know it's by Rosewood Manor. Um, don't know. I do not know what fabric this is. This is Fabric Flare. It's by Fabric Flare. This is that fabric that's printed. Um, 
ha you know, it's like modeled on one side and then the other side not. This is what I have of that so far. Love that basket. It is so much fun. Colors are really pretty and there's not many colors in this design. Again, I, this would look so pretty in our house and I love these colors and I need to get back into that one. All right. It's like a surprise. Oh, what's in this one? Oh yeah. My gosh, this is so pretty too. Mm. Parchment tapestry. Gosh, this is so pretty. By Karen Kluba. Ugh. Rosewood Manor. Another Rosewood Manor. Gorgeous. Love tapestry. I think it's so pretty. Mm. All right. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I'm not doing the cross stitches. Um, all of the green that make each section. They're supposed to be cross stitches. I'm doing... Um, just satin stitches. I thought it looked pretty cool. And this is what I have. The colors are beautiful. That is so pretty and it's gonna look so sharp when it's finished. <laughs> if it ever gets finished. It better get finished. Darn it. Love that one. Beautiful. Uh, what did I stitch it on? 36 count winter brew. And it is stitched over two on 36 count. And yes, it looks like I stuck painter's tape on the edge of my fabric. Mm -hmm. Sure did. That's okay though, painter's tape doesn't leave a residue, so it's all good. Now I had this in here, all nice, and it fit. This is a, Liz got me this bag as a gift, and I think it's one of those so much to love bags. All right, what's next? Oh, yes. This one is um, Christmas Sampler, Jeanette Douglas. And you can do either one. You can do like the one that's more white or the more natural. And I'm doing the natural, Liz has the white. Some of the thread choices are a little different along with the fabric is a little different. And I'm like halfway through this one. This one's not huge. It's a lot of fun. Different, um, you know, threads that are used and different, some different stitches. That's what I have so far. Hmm. Yep. Oh well, I'll put that away later. All right, couple more. From down here oh yeah this one's gorgeous oh my gosh another rosewood manor hmm. this is that buckleberry sampler that when we saw someone at one of our retreats working on it oh my gosh gorgeous and she was like really far along and I couldn't believe by looking at how beautiful her sampler was that it was all DMC right isn't that why I was so surprised yeah it's all DMC it's gorgeous um, so this is what it looks like. Buckleberry sampler. And this is my measly little start. It is over one. Yup. I should never start another thing for the rest of my life, right? But I will. And this is why I don't do a lot of sows because I just don't do the actual stitching a long part. This is a Sally Spencer sampler, Birds of a Feather. Yes, I bent my chart. Oh well. Um, this is stitched on ale, if I remember correctly love this fabric awesome and uh i'm what good halfway at, at least with that that's a lot of fun cool colors too 
I think I did change one or two or so of them, but that's really fun. And I'm pretty sure that that's ale. I don't know if that's what it calls for or not. No, they call for meadow lark. So this is not the called for fabric. And in the same bag, I had taken this with me to Vegas because I thought I was going to work on it. I didn't. I worked on that chick the whole time and got that finished. But, um, oh, that's not a whip. I didn't start it. I got something ready to go in there, so I'll leave it. That's not an actual whip. All right. Let's see what we have here. Oh, oh my gosh. I did work on something else since I've seen you last. I completely forgot this. I got the second store done on my, um, oh, good Lord. Um, Little House Needleworks, and it's the um, Hometown Holiday Series. This one is the bookstore. So this is what I have. I got the sweet shop finished, and then the bookstore. Again, lots of backstitching because I really wanted it to pop. You know, all the books in the windows, and I did change the color of, um, well, the background of the bottom of the store and the windows are changed. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start my next, I think it's the coffee shop, and I'm gonna butt my coffee shop right up next to the bookstore. You know how in some of those small, quaint little towns, um, there's, some of the stores are right next to each other and then some have a little alleyway, some are kind of really separated. I kind of wanted it to have that look. There's a really neat town that we love to go to in um, Maryland, um, and it's a water town, and it just has, it's St. Michael's, Maryland, and also uh, Easton right there, and they're just, they're just beautiful. They have those quaint little streets that you walk down where the, the shops are right there, and, and it's just, it's, it's not new things, you know? It just looks very quaint. Um, and anyway, that's, so that's what I was doing. So I did, I forgot that I got that completely finished, that bookstore. Well, that was good. Nice surprise. All right. Um, two more. Two more things. And then there was a couple things up in the basket in my bedroom. Oh, this is, okay, so, yeah, this is the lessons uh, in Abecedarian or whatever, and this was all of them right here. So when they're finished, that'll be what it looks like. And this is what I got my earlier finish that I told you about I'm gonna use for um, my exchange. This is where I got that from. It was the first one here. And like I said, I didn't stitch the entire thing. I just picked apart some of the center of that design. So I have this all ready to go, although, like I said, I am gonna change the fabric on that. And I have no idea what's in here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I know why I put this one down, because I'm stumped. This is another needlepoint. And I, for some reason, I am not getting this next stitch at all that goes around it, and I, tried to figure it out, Liz tried to figure it out. We just, I cannot get it to match up and to do what I need it to do at the corners. Um, but the, I love all of this, it's, it's beautiful. It looks gorgeous. Um, and I love the colors of it. However, I'm stuck and that's why I put that away. This was um, a class at uh, the Jamboree one year also and I got up to this point and um, now I don't know what to do. So hopefully at some point someone can help me with this and get it finished because it's so cute. I mean, I could just turn it into a little ornament, you know, take off that side that I have screwed up on and just turn this into an ornament. I mean, I could, it's pretty, but I also kind of really want to figure out what I can't figure out because it's driving me crazy. All right. That is my whip parade. Everything except for a couple things that I have up in my bedroom basket, that's, that's everything. So, all right. 
let's do a giveaway. Actually, let's do a couple giveaways. Hopefully, I am really hoping that on our next video, you will actually see both of us together. So that would be fantastic. Um, let's all hope for that. We are going to move to the yellow um, phase here in Lancaster, although a lot of places have just went ahead and just started opening up against the governor's order. Opening up as safely as they possibly can. There are a lot of businesses that really can get back and and do it safely and um, we need to we need our small businesses to make it through this time in fact if you can order at all from a brick and mortar um, stitching store please do even if you don't have a um, one that's local to you or even in your state if you know anybody else that orders from anywhere else or any of the the uh, um, People maybe that you watch on Floss Tube. People have mentioned lots of different brick and mortar stores. We really need to make sure that they keep their doors open. I mean, I'm grateful for all the online shops also, but our brick and mortar stores, there's nothing better than walking into a stitching store. And we do not want them to disappear. So we need to make sure that we're getting them through this. They still have to pay their rent, their electric. Um, they have more overhead than what a um, online store does. And so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of every time I need to order something, I'm picking a new store and we have our local ones always listed in our drop down section. If you want to check out um, Salty Yarns, Stitches Unlimited, HodgePodge, um, the Strawberry Sampler is near us. Strawberry Sampler or Strawberry Basket? I always want to say the wrong one. Um, and like I said, just even if you're watching this and you want to put the name and telephone number of your favorite brick and mortar store so that other people reading the comments maybe they'll read one from a certain state and and you know want to shop there during this time or whatever a lot of um stores are also doing uh free shipping or quite a break on the shipping because you can't actually physically walk into their store but it's just so important to me that we keep all of our brick and mortar stores in business i don't want any of our stitching stores our fabric stores to go out of business oh i hope not Anyway, let's get back to giveaways. Okay, so let's do a few. Um, first one, Country Cottage Needleworks. It's the Ornamental Joy. If you are interested in this as a giveaway, say something about... Let me see. I have the words written down, and I don't want to say the wrong thing. Say something about joy in your comment. Number two, Plum Street Samplers. Love thy neighbor. If you love this chart and would like a chance at getting it, um, say something about neighbor in your comment. Um, number three is uh, Praiseworthy Stitches, and this is actually courtesy of Cynthia, one of our viewers. Thank you so much, Cynthia. She, she loved this pattern so much, she bought it twice. We all do that. <laughs> That's how you know you really love something. You forgot that you had it. And this is really cool. It's an awesome Halloween pattern, so... If you start stitching it now, you could easily, maybe, have it finished by Halloween this year. But it's really cool. It's a Blue Moon blue moon Manor, uh, and it is from Praiseworthy Stitches. Very cool chart. If you are interested in this one, say something about Halloween. And last one, Plenty and Grace, Primitive Traditions, and that was in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It's a beautiful sampler. Um, this is courtesy of our friend Sandy. That's really pretty. And if you love this one, say something about sampler in your um, comment that you leave. You're more than welcome to say all the words if you want to. In fact, I'd be really interested to read someone's comment that can incorporate all of those words in the same comment. That's pretty cool. So Halloween, neighbor, joy, and sampler are your words. Uh, and please don't say free or giveaway if you don't mind. We want to make sure that you actually want to win this and are going to stitch it. Uh, all right. I think that is it. Um, like I said, hopefully Liz and I will be back together very soon. And um, I hope that you are all enjoying the start of summer and that you're still getting through this quarantine thing. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's all good. It's all good. What are you going to do, right? got to keep going. All right. I think that's it. And, um, thank you again for subscribing. Thank you for hitting that like button and for leaving us comments and just for all of your 
sweet and kind words and um, we really appreciate every one of you and please take care and we will see you soon. Share the joy of needlework. See ya.